Welcome to this week's photography video. And if you haven't been on this channel before, my name is Tom and I bring a new video on water, surf or travel lifestyle photography each week. And I also run an online photography school with new workshops coming out all the time. Links for more info on this are below the video. And please subscribe to this YouTube to keep in touch about new content. All your likes and comments really help, you know, if he just gives me some encouragement, you know, just to keep going. So a deep thank you to all of you out there that do that. In this week's video, I'm going to look at a term in the photography world called bracketing. Have you heard of bracketing? Do you bracket yourself? Bracketing is basically taking multiple pictures of the same scene using different settings to either let in more or less light onto your, into your picture. There are many reasons for why a photographer would uh, choose to bracket an image. But to start with, let's look back to the days of film and explain where it all started. When I started, I was shooting on slide film and I didn't have the instant reference of today's digital cameras. So I would sometimes bracket a important image so that one of the slides exposed exactly the way I wanted it. I would generally take uh, the first shot underexposed by one stop and the next picture exposed at the right, uh, what the camera thought or the light meter suggested and then one stop over. And that's that way, when I got my film back, I had three different exposure levels to choose from for my hero shot. It was super critical to get the precise exposure when shooting on the slide film. Now with the digital cameras, you get to see on the back of your camera, uh, the exposure straight away. And this is great. And you might say, well, why bother bracketing if you can see what you've got uh, that you've got the right exposure. Well, if you use bracketing technique on important shoots, it can give you more options for um, setting different moods from the same, same image or from the same scene. For example, in a shoot that I did this week at dusk, I shot uh, each image way underexposed to way overexposed that, so that from the same shoot, I had an entirely uh, different feeling with the image, which was shot at the same time of the day with the same subject. So on this, nice calm evening that didn't have crazy interesting clouds or anything like that, I was able to give myself a few options after the shoot for different moods by using the bracketing technique. So I got everything from uh, dark silhouettes right through to light, breezy, bright looking images. And neither of these are right or wrong, but one of these feelings or tones will work in some campaigns or editorial spots better than others. They may complement a brand or an article better if they are lighter or maybe better when they were darker and silhouetted. Now I may only use or submit one variation of these, but having all these exposures up my sleeve is good to know. Now I hear more, some of you might be saying, why don't you just shoot at the camera's suggested uh, exposure setting and go darker or lighter in post-production afterwards? And yes, this is of course totally possible. And a lot of the times I will go further towards a silhouette or go lighter in post-production. But if you have the time like I did with this shoot, it's better to shoot as close to the density of the end result as possible. Each time you make adjustments in post-production, the quality of the image is degraded even when working with raw files. If you try and pull out information out of the shadow areas to lighten, then you will start to get a lot of noise or grain in, in your image. If, however, you have an image that has been exposed for these shadow areas, then the information is there and the quality, quality will be much better. This is especially important if you are ever intending on selling your images as stock photos or for commercial purposes and for large printing needs as well. Now, in a lot of situations, it isn't possible to bracket images. Uh, for instance, in a high action situation, this method is not practical and it's not always needed either. I use it more when I can see that a scene um, has potential to look good both in a, bright, in a bright exposure and a dark exposure. Another strong reason for bracketing is to blend multiple exposures to do HDRs, which combines information from the highlights in the darker exposures with the shadow areas from the lighter exposures. This HDR game is a whole nother beast. And I'll take that on in a different video, so I won't go into that right now. This discussion is more to point out um, how from the same evening and subject, you can achieve different looks and feelings 
just by using the extremes of the exposure graph. Now, there are four ways to implement exposure bracketing, uh, which I go into detail inside my online workshops. Three of these uh, ways give you a little more control over your settings. But to get you started, you can get it happening by using the auto exposure bracketing mode or the AEB mode that is on most DSLR cameras. When this is enabled, your exposure graph will look something like this. So with this 5D camera, the next seven shots will be taken with different exposures ranging from three stops underexposed to three stops overexposed. The first shot it takes is bang in the middle of what the camera thinks is the best perfect exposure. Then it goes to three stops underexposed, then two stops underexposed, then one stop underexposed, then one stop over, two stops over, and their final shot is uh, in the series is three stops overexposed. So I shoot quickly, counting to seven, and then I know it will start again for another set of exposures. You can also see in the viewfinder the exposure graph and it pointing to the exposure it is about to take. When you push in the back focus button or halfway press down on the shutter button, this line on the exposure graph is the one it's about to take. So when you get to the last one in the right hand side of the graph, three stops over, then you know uh, that you're about to start a new set of images with your next frame. To get out of the bracketing mode, you just go to exposure menu and toggle back one marker on the graph to normal um, shooting. I know some cameras may only allow you to do three exposure brackets, and this in many cases will be enough, but I like to do more if I have the time. So the seven, uh, sorry, the 5D Mark III does seven. So note you can normally set your bracketing in either full stops or half stops between the images. With this, I'm trying to get a distinct difference between each shot, so I selected a full stop, full stop bracketing. It is something extra to add to the stuff that's going on in the ocean, and I wouldn't suggest doing this in a high action situation at all, or when um, you have limited time or are feeling stressed, but it's certainly a cool thing to play around with uh, to get some variation in your results. You can use auto exposure bracketing in all modes, full manual, aperture priority, shutter speed priority, and even program mode if you wanna go there. But basically, you are increasing or decreasing the light to give options for later use. Doing this will increase your quality output, especially if you choose to go super, super light or super dark with your end result. And it may open up your eyes to what could look better than just shooting the correct exposure all the time. Okay, so that's a wrap for this video and um, thanks for tuning in this week again. Bracketing is a cool tool to use and I reckon you should give it a go, even if it's in your backyard to just you know, work out how the camera uh, is used. And, you know, sometimes you're so surprised with how much better a uh, picture looks well underexposed to well overexposed. Not always, but sometimes it comes out. So please ask any questions below and, um, and I'm happy to get back to you with the answers. Once again, all the links to more stuff on photography, water photography, surf photography, travel photography are all below this video and I'd love to connect with you. Thanks, legends. We'll see you next week.